In this presentation we will talk about Belial, who is one of the patron deities of the temple. We will take a look at his origin and sources, and discuss some of his masks and manifestations. These masks are explored in a practical way in an open project that is currently available for download from our website. Let's start with the mythology. Belial appears in old grimoires such as Goetia, where he is mentioned among 72 spirits constituting the main part of the book, or in Grimorium Verum, where he is identified with Beelzebub. But Belial and Beelzebub are usually seen as two distinct beings. He appears in the Bible and Jewish apocryphal literature, as well as in modern Satanism and the writings of Anton LaVey. He is also mentioned in such texts as the Dead Sea Scrolls, where he appears as the Angel of Darkness and the Antagonist of God. In the old sources his name is used as a synonym for Satan, and he is one of the most commonly recognized personifications of evil. It is even thought that the name Belial or Beliar doesn't refer to any specific spirit, but is simply a title signifying wickedness. For example, in the Bible we read about sons of Belial, which is interpreted as vile or worthless ones. Other meanings of the name include destruction, ruin, death, the abyss, lawlessness, or without a master. In the Bible and the Apocrypha, Belial is a synonym for Prince of Darkness, the Antichrist, the Devil, the Father of Idolatry, the Demon of Impurity, the Angel of Lawlessness, and the Ruler of the World, Spirit of the Earth. These roles and interpretations of Belial, his masks, reveal him as a complex and multifaceted figure, appearing in many contexts and possessing many magical powers. In our project, we take a close look at some of these powers and titles of the Demon King in a practical way, exploring his gnosis through the combined techniques of meditation, chanting, and dream work. So what exactly are these masks? The first one of these is the Gatekeeper of the Abyss. This aspect of Belial is related to the interpretation of his name as Sheol, which translates to the Abyss. Within the Kabbalistic framework of the Tree of Life and Tree of Death, the term Abyss refers to the concealed Sephira Death. In a positive context, it represents knowledge, but from the perspective of the Cliff of, it is referred to as the Worthless One, which is another concept associated with Belial. The adept embarking on the journey through the night side encounters Belial as the gatekeeper of the entrance to the abyss. In this aspect, he guards the portal that connects the bright and dark sides of the tree. His role is to open the way to the abyss and to the highest triad on the Kabbalistic tree, and he aids in preparation of consciousness for the opening of the gate of death. The second mask explored in the project is the Angel of Darkness. This depiction of Belial is derived from the Dead Sea Scrolls, which make reference to the Angel of Light and the Angel of Darkness. God is commonly referred to as the Angel of Light, while Belial is described as the opposite. According to the text, the demon made people feel ashamed of themselves and encouraged them to act immorally. Furthermore, the source recounts a dream of Amram, Moses' ancestor, in which Belial is described as the ruler of darkness or the ruler of malevolence. According to the testament of the twelve patriarchs, the demon is God's adversary and serves as a tempter. According to the scriptures, fornication causes a person to turn away from God and towards Belial. There are also claims that when a soul is disturbed, it belongs to Belial. The third mask is the Goetic demon angel. In Goetia, Belial is a powerful demon king, created after Lucifer. He comes as two beautiful angels sitting in a chariot of fire, distributing titles and offices, and bestowing favors of both friends and adversaries. He is also one of the four ruling forces of all Goetic spirits, connected with the direction of north and the element of earth. According to the Goetic legend, King Solomon imprisoned the most terrible spirits of the earth in a brazen vessel, which he then cast into a deep lake in Babylon ensuring that the demons would never again bother humanity. However, the Babylonians, believing it contained a hidden treasure, retrieved it and shattered the seal that kept the spirits bound. When the seal was broken, they all flew out and returned to their original dwellings, with the exception of Belial, 
who entered the statue and became an oracle to his worshippers, acting as an intermediary between the spirits and sorcerers, seeking the wisdom and power of Sitra Ara in the other side. The fourth mask is the Lord of War. Belial appears in the War Scroll as part of a messianic tradition that arose just after the Babylonian exilic period. Eschatology and messianism lie at the heart of Qumran scholarship. The Damascus document includes a time frame for the end times written by a community formed circa 96 BCE. It describes a war between the Sons of Light, led by Melchizedek, described as a heavenly being of Elohim, and the Sons of Darkness, led by Belial. It begins to describe a developing messianic tradition, where some of the messiahs had temple duties, whereas others had more militaristic responsibilities. The next mask is Spirit of Lawlessness. Belial as a spirit of lawlessness is mentioned in the Bible and the Apocrypha, where Belial is a synonym for the devil, the adversary. From Goetia we learn that he is a stubborn and rebellious spirit that has to be given offerings and sacrifices, otherwise he will not obey the magician's commands. One of his offices is to tempt the righteous and lead them on the way of transgression, be it in the spiritual sense or in the sense of disobeying the law and breaking rules and structures of order. He is the angel of lawlessness who can help with any situation having to do with law, offering guidance to those who want to avoid legal prosecution, and in a spiritual sense he inspires the sinfulness and immorality of mankind leading people to acts of transgression. Then we explore Belial as the Lord of the Earth. In this role, Belial is already mentioned in the Apocrypha. In Western esoteric tradition, he is one of the four ruling forces associated with the cardinal directions. In this paradigm, he rules the North alongside three other spirits, Leviathan in the West, Satan in the South, and Lucifer in the East. Because of the connection between North and the Earth, he is often believed to be the Lord of the Earth. This is a relatively new association though, owing much to Lavey's Satanic Bible, in which Belial denotes earthly mastery, magic with both feet on the ground, real, hardcore magical procedure, as well as independence, self-sufficiency, and personal accomplishment. The last mask explored in the project is the worthless one. One of the interpretations of Belial's name is the Worthless Man. This interpretation is derived from the Talmud and explains the name Belial as composed of two words, Beli and Ol, or Yoil, which means without a yoke or without advantage, that is, worthless. This is also connected to his role as the gatekeeper of the Abyss. Within the Tree of Cliff of Paradigm, the Abyss is considered as a transition zone between the phenomenal realm of appearance to its noumenal source, that is, non-manifestation. To reach the abyss, we must leave our world behind, and its affairs and material possessions must no longer hold any worth for us, hence the title worthless. In the abyss we have no sense of time or space, and nothing exists, including the mundane world, our lives and ourselves. Everything we wear no longer matters, and we become the worthless one. The project includes seven workings, which have to be done individually on seven days in a row, before sleep. All workings are designed according to the same pattern. Meditation of the sigil of the Eye of Belial, chanting the mantra of calling, attuning to the vibrations of the Demon King through the music track specifically dedicated to Belial, and the Dream Path working. The purpose is to introduce the practitioner to the current of Belial in its diverse forms and manifestations, showing how he can be approached in modern magic and how his powers can be used for the sake of shadow work. This is an open project, which means it's available to everyone. You don't need to be a temple member. You don't have to be an advanced practitioner. And we don't charge anything for this material. All we ask for in return for our work is a report with the feedback and description of results. The project can be downloaded from our website, which is ascendingflame.com. This project was prepared in collaboration with Katie Collins, and we have also used the chant and music track composed by Edgar Kerfer. For more information about our open and inner projects, check out the notifications on our website or sign up for our newsletter. 
And if you're interested in working with us, feel free to email us.